Hello everybody, this video is on electromagnetic induction, Faraday's law. Previously in the video on magnetic flux, we talked about that the magnitude of magnetic flux is affected by three variables. And this is given by the equation five equals to B A cosine theta. The value of flux is affected by the magnetic field strength, B, and this is sometimes known as the flux density. It is affected by the angle between the conductor and the magnetic field, and that's theta, and also, of course, the area of the conductor A. To understand Faraday's law of induction, it's important to be familiar with these three factors, because any changes in one or more of these three factors will cause changes in magnetic flux. The changes in magnetic flux is the foundation of how electromagnetic induction works. Let's go through some visual examples. If we have a rectangular coil and we move a bar magnet towards the coil, the coil will experience an increase in magnetic flux because the proximity of the bar magnet will determine the value of the flux density that's passing through the coil. The closer the bar magnet is, the higher the strength of the magnetic field. Vice versa, if the bar magnet is moved away from the coil, the flux density or the magnitude of the magnetic field experienced by the coil will also decrease. And as a result, it will experience a decrease in magnetic flux. In addition to the motion between the magnet and the coil, the orientation or the angle between the coil and the magnet also matters. The bar magnet will of course generate its own magnetic field in the orientation from the North Pole to the South Pole as shown. If we allow the coil to rotate, this is going to change the angle between its normal and the direction of the magnetic field. And since the value of flux is determined by this angle theta, as the angle theta changes, the value of the flux also changes. The third factor that determines the magnetic flux is the area. On the left hand side, we have a rectangular conductor moving towards a uniform magnetic field. And as the conductor is moving towards into the field, the area of the conductor that's actually affected by the magnetic field is increasing. So as we have an increasing area, the amount of magnetic flux is also going to increase. Vice versa, if we move the rectangular coil out of and away from the uniform magnetic field, the area of the conductor that's being affected will effectively decrease. And that's gonna give us a reduced amount of flux passing through the conductor. So now that we've understood what magnetic flux is and how magnetic flux passing through a conductor can change, let's talk about electromagnetic induction. Suppose we have a rod containing electrons and we move this rod into a uniform magnetic field as shown. The charged particles, that is the electrons in this conductor, as it's moving into the field, it will be acted upon by a force due to the magnetic field. And this force is given by QVB sine theta. The direction of this force can be determined using the right-hand palm rule. So if the electrons are moving to the right, we should point our thumb to the left-hand side of the screen our fingers will be in the same direction as the uniform magnetic field. And as a result, the force that's being produced due to the field will be going downwards. And as a result of this force, the electrons will start to move in the conductor. When we have these moving electrons, we will produce what we usually call a electric current. The direction of this induced conventional current is typically defined in the opposite direction as the movement of the electrons. So although the electrons are moving downward due to this force, the current actually moves upwards. This phenomenon where a conventional current is produced due to the forces acting on the electrons in the conductor is an example of what we call electromagnetic induction. The word induction refers to the fact that we have produced current by simply moving a conductor within a magnetic field. Faraday's law of induction states that a electromotive force, EMF for short, is induced in a conductor when the conductor experiences a change in magnetic flux. 
In the previous example, when the rod containing electrons is moved towards the uniform magnetic field, it will experience an increase in flux because a greater area of the conductor will be within the field. According to Faraday, when this conductor experiences any type of change in flux, including an increase in flux, there will be an EMF, which is also voltage, that's being induced within the conductor. And this voltage or EMF will cause a current to be produced. Mathematically, Faraday's law is expressed as the following equation. Epsilon stands for the EMF is equal to minus N being the number of turns of the conductor times by the changing flux over the changing time. This equation tells us that the magnitude of EMF depends on the number of turns of the coil, which is typically only applicable when we look at solenoids rather than straight conductors. And more importantly, it also depends on the rate of flux change. So that's how quickly is the amount of magnetic flux changing. The faster the flux is changing, the greater the magnitude the EMF will be. And consequently, if you have a greater EMF, you will likely have a greater induced current in the conductor. Let's have a look at how we can use Faraday's Law's equation in an examination question. So we have a coil of 10 turns placed inside a uniform magnetic field. Initially, there's a total of 0.5 Webers of flux passing through the coil. So this is my initial amount of phi. The magnitude of the field is reduced to zero at a constant rate over 1.5 seconds. So this is my final amount of flux, which is zero. And the time that's taken to do so is 1.5 seconds. So Faraday's law is equal to minus n times by delta phi over delta t, or the changing time. So minus 10 turns multiply by the changing phi. So the changing flux is the final minus the initial divided by the changing time. So this is equal to zero minus 0.5 Webers divided by 1.5 seconds. And this gives me a 3.33 volts of EMF. This EMF, if it's induced in a coil that's already in a closed circuit, will produce a current. Besides straight conductors, Faraday's law of induction can also be demonstrated using solenoids or coils. This is usually demonstrated by using a bar magnet and a solenoid connected to an ammeter, which can detect current. When the bar magnet is moved at a given velocity v towards the solenoid, the coils in the solenoid will experience an increase in magnetic flux. And according to Faraday's law, which states that when a conductor experiences any changes in flux, there will be an induced EMF. And this is why there will be a current flowing through the solenoid as shown. What you should also know about Faraday's law of induction is that the magnitude of EMF, epsilon, is given by minus n delta phi over delta time. The magnitude of current is dependent on the magnitude of the EMF, which is, again, dependent on these three variables. If the solenoid has more turns, then the magnitude of the current produced will be higher. If the rate of flux change is greater, then the magnitude of EMF and current will also be greater. So for example, if the bar magnet is moved towards the solenoid at a faster velocity, this is going to result in a faster rate of flux change, so greater delta phi over delta t, and that will give us an increased magnitude of EMF. When the bar magnet stops moving, there will be no longer changes in flux, so delta phi becomes zero. Again, by Faraday's law, if there's no changes in magnetic flux, there will be no induced EMF, and as a result, there will be no current produced. So in this setting, the amp meter will produce no readings.